Hey there guys, welcome to Dino's World once again. Today, just as I promised, I'll be talking about what is ABS, what are the advantages and disadvantages of ABS, as well as single channel ABS, dual channel ABS, RLP and a whole lot more. So without further ado, let's dive straight into this Dinopedia video. With the number of road accident deaths here in our nation being nearly over 400 deaths per day, it's really binding on us to drive safely while also deploying all the electronic safety aids that are available in our market to ensure the safety of ourselves, the safety of our loved ones, as well as the safety of others plying on the road. In this video, we'll be learning about one of the most crucial safety features that is a must-have feature, in my opinion, in the car you drive or the bike you ride. First of all, let's see what does ABS stand for. ABS stands for Anti-Lock Braking System. Now, what it actually means is it prevents the wheels from locking up under harsh braking scenarios wherein the vehicle you are driving or riding is prone to skidding. Talking a little about the ABS history, the first truly effective anti-lock braking systems have been around since the 1950s when British firm Dunlop first developed its Maxaret system for use in airplanes. The hydraulic system improved air aircraft stopping distances when landing as it eliminated the risk of wheels locking even on ice and it dramatically reduced flat spotting and tire blowouts. Since then it was only a matter of time before ABS was considered and added as a must have safety feature on cars as well as bikes. The first road car to feature ABS was the 1966 Jensen FF. The FF was also the first production sports car to feature four wheel drive and it also used the Maxaret anti-lock system to improve stopping distances. So how does ABS work? The ABS system uses sensors to detect when one wheel is rotating at a different rate compared to the others. If the sensor registers that a wheel is turning more slowly under braking, then that's a sign the wheel is locking or about to lock. The electronics then reduce the braking pressure by activating a relief valve until it is equal with that of the other wheels. If the wheel begins to lock again, the process is repeated in the same way as pumping the brake pedal. Although the electronics are sensitive enough to repeat this mechanism a number of times per second, you can tell if your car's ABS system is working if you brake heavily and feel the brake pedal judder under your right foot. Modern ABS systems use a 4-channel controller module that features individual sensors and relief valves on all 4 wheels or 2 wheels in case of motorcycles. Now this takes us to the next section as to what is single channel ABS and dual channel ABS as well as what is RLP. Now please note that single channel and dual channel ABS is applicable only to 2 wheelers. Now single channel ABS simply means ABS is operational only on the front wheel. Now this means the rear wheel can still lock up under harsh braking scenarios. However, as per braking techniques recommended by experts, we are supposed to use 70% of braking pressure on the front brakes and only 30% on the rear brake. Hence, having a single channel ABS also will suffice in most cases, but it is always better to go with the option of dual channel ABS that offers a more secure braking performance all around. So here we have the answer for dual channel ABS which means ABS is operational simultaneously on the front wheel as well as the rear wheel of a two-wheeler. Also, usually single channel ABS is offered with RLP feature wherein RLP stands for rear wheel lift off protection. Now what happens in this case is though ABS is not operational for the rear wheel, we do have sensors present in both front and rear wheels which send info to the ECU about the wheel speed. When we hit the brakes, based on the info sent from the sensors present on the front as well as the rear wheel, the ECU releases the amount of braking pressure to be applied on the front wheel such that the front wheel doesn't lock up and at the same time the rear wheel doesn't lift off resulting in you doing a stoppy. Now this answers the next part of our question as to what is RLP or rear wheel lift off protection wherein the braking force is released in such a way so as to avoid the rear wheel from lifting off and causing a stoppy. Now this is the setup we see on the Pulsar RS200 which gets a single channel ABS although ABS sensors are present on the front wheel as well as the rear wheel. Now looking at the advantages of ABS, a car fitted with ABS braking on tarmac will stop in a far shorter distance than an identical non-ABS car and the same thing applies to a bike as well. Secondly, ABS really comes in handy on wet surfaces where the car or bike is prone to skidding easily due to wheel lockup. Now thirdly, another problem that arises under harsh braking scenarios is that the car's steering won't work if your tires are skidding. Now what ABS system does is it avoids wheel skidding and allows you to steer your vehicle while braking which means you can steer your vehicle away from any impending danger that lies straight ahead of you even with the braking force being applied to the wheels all along. 
Now looking at the disadvantages of ABS, point number one is that on loose, dirt or muddy surfaces, the anti-locking function can become confused and the constant releasing that the electronics engage in can in fact extend stopping distances because on loose surfaces, a locked wheel is more effective at stopping as it digs in to help bring the car to a stop. Now that is the reason many off-roaders feature a special off-road mode which reduces the effectiveness of ABS or turns it off completely to boost low speed grip. Secondly, please note that having ABS on board doesn't make you death proof. Now just because you have an ABS equipped car or bike, it doesn't mean that you can drive at breakneck speeds and expect ABS to save the day for you. Always ride at reasonable speeds such that you can control the bike and bring it to a halt should anything unforeseen happen. My very own friends have lost their lives in road accidents though they were riding dual channel ABS equipped motorcycles. So please ride carefully by knowing your limits as well as your bike's limits. Thirdly, ABS vehicles are more expensive to maintain because if something goes wrong with the sensors, replacement can set you back by thousands of rupees. However, as I always keep saying, spending a few extra thousand rupees shouldn't be an issue especially when your life itself is at stake. So I am really grateful to some of our Indian car manufacturers like Maruti who are leading by example now by including ABS as a standard safety feature right from the base variant which is amazing. I look forward to that day when ABS would be made mandatory by our government at least for 200cc motorcycles and above which in turn may end up saving many lives across our nation. Well that's pretty much it for today's episode of Dinopedia. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and learned something useful. Until next time this is Dino saying ciao, take care, God bless and ride safe.